Well, first things first for this dinner, we have to fetch ourselves a duck. Which one of you guys wants to come inside for dinner, babies? Just kidding. When Mr. Vintage Dietitian sees this part of the video, he is not going to think it's very funny. Hello, my beautiful friends, and welcome back. We are at the 11th Sunday dinner of the 52 Sunday Dinners Project. Here is what we're having today. We're starting with dried split pea soup. For our main dish, we're having roast duck. That's going to be served with apple and horseradish sauce. On the side, we'll have baked sweet potatoes, creamed peas, and for our salad course, we'll have a lettuce salad with French cheese dressing, and for dessert, peach custard pie, and as always, coffee. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. My name is Ashley and I'm a registered dietitian and I love everything food and vintage. I have combined those two things, food and vintage, to bring you this. And this is the 52 Sunday Dinners Project. If this is your first time here and you're curious about what exactly we're doing and what the point of this project is, you can refer back to week one where I give a little bit more of an in-depth explanation as to what this whole thing is. Now, if you'd like to join us, we're gonna head into the kitchen and get this dinner started. For the biscuits in this peach custard pie, I'm actually going to try out this Bob's Red Mill gluten-free biscuit mix. I know it's not the same. I know they didn't have this in the 1920s, but I really, really want to try this peach custard pie cake, whatever this is out. And I think it'll be the perfect opportunity to test this. So the other thing before we start is I have this square pan, but I'm just thinking in my mind, if it's like two cups plus whatever else we're mixing this with of biscuit dough, then the peach is on top and the thing we're supposed to pour over is four cups of milk. Is it going to fit in this square pan? If not, we have a backup rectangle that is like kind of twice the size of this. So if we need to, we will adjust and switch into there or maybe even if we have just a little bit left over that's a little bit too much, we'll use maybe a loaf pan or something and make just a little mini one instead. Where I normally put the regular recipes from the book up, I'll go ahead and put the recipe for this mix up while we're mixing this, and then we'll switch over once this is done back to the regular recipe so that when you're watching this, you're not thinking that I'm using that recipe to make this. The recipe says to put it in a quick oven for 20 minutes. I wasn't sure what quick oven meant. We've talked about the difference between a low or a light oven, a medium, a slow, a high, but they haven't said quick yet. I'm assuming for two reasons that quick means hot. First, because if it's quick, it's the opposite of slow, which is a low and quick, I would assume, the, the higher the temperature, the faster it's going to cook. And then also, this recipe calls for the biscuits to be baked at 400 degrees. So I'm setting ours at 400 and we're going to pretend that it is a quick oven. I'm not rolling it, obviously. I'm just kind of pressing it instead so it'll fit in here. I think we'll be good. I think we'll fit those other four cups on top with the peaches. Okay. As always, again, we're gonna find out. I don't know how much we're supposed to poke with the fork. Cover with the halves of canned peaches. I don't know whether we should have them face up or face down. I think if we go this way, it'll hold more of the mixture, I suppose. This way seems right. Okay, I'm gonna need another can, it looks like. Mixing up the chopping for this, I can see uh, where a mom or earlier, where earlier I thought that this would fit, I can see now there is zero chance that this mixture is going to fit on top of there. So I'm going to attempt to get it into the other container. 
and hopefully it'll work out. I do believe I'm making way more dishes than is necessary here. Oh my, this might not even fit in this one. Yeah, we're really pushing it there. I'll let that sit for a minute and settle. Ooh, these are all floating. Yeah, I'm gonna let that sit and settle, soak in where it needs to before I start moving it and we have a little bit of a spillover disaster. It's been much longer than 20 minutes. I think we're probably looking at about 30 at this point and it does not look like this is quite done in the middle. So uh, just a little heads up for anybody who is making this, you're probably going to need a good bit more than 20 minutes. For the applesauce, I'm using Granny Smith apples again. I really like the tartness when we made it with Chef's Scarlet, that applesauce. And so I think I'm gonna use that again. We'll just cook those down real quick with a little bit of sugar to sweeten it a bit. Now, our horseradish, I'm really excited about using in this. Mm, I can, <laughs> just smelling it, I'm starting to salivate and I feel like my, my sinuses are clearing a little bit. One of our very dear friends and neighbors grows this every year and he and his granddaughters process it. And he gave us some of it. Each year he gives us a little bit of it and I savor it dearly. I think we have one more left in the freezer and so I look forward to this all the time. He makes the best horseradish. I really like my things spicy with horseradish and so I think I'm going to add probably all of this in there I don't think it'll be too overwhelming. I think it'll be good that way. When I eat horseradish and I get a big bite of it, I eat too much of it. Like, um, I don't know if anybody's ever had a beef on weck. I think it might be a buffalo thing, but you get the best beef on weck from Adrian's on Grand Island in New York. So if anybody wants to try some of those sandwiches with horseradish, they're just incredible. But whenever i take a big bite and i get too much horseradish it along with draining my sinuses it burns into like the top of my head right here i can feel it like at the tip of my skull just burning and whenever i say this people have no idea what i'm talking about they can't relate but does any that happen to anybody else like when you eat horseradish and you take too big of a bite and it burns everything your eyes water your nose just starts clearing itself out does it burn like right here or am I just crazy I don't know I mean I probably am just crazy but <laughs> I've never had apples with horseradish before so this should be fun to try out this menu is really interesting for me this week because a lot of the things that are on the menu I have leftovers sort of, or something to contribute that's already made. For this split pea soup, coincidentally, two weeks ago, I believe, a week and a half ago, I made a giant batch of split peas, like a huge batch. And I knew I wouldn't be able to eat them in time. So I froze a bunch of them. And so I just happened to have a, a bunch of um, frozen split peas that are already cooked. I'm gonna cook them down just a little bit more. They already were cooked in onion, and so I'm just going to add a little bit of savory, some bacon to it, and then 
afterward, I'll go ahead, I'll put it through the sieve, I'll smooth all of it out, then I'll add all of the, the Worcestershire, 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 how do you guys say it? I know this is always uh, a sticking point for most people. I thought I had it down, but then I just went to say it out loud to you guys and it didn't work out. So Worcestershire sauce and the salt pepper. I'm gonna thicken with the gluten-free flour. We'll see if that thickens it. It actually seems to have been thickening a little bit. And so we'll just try it out and see if it works. Before I rip this salad up into pieces and put it in this napkin, I guess we're using a tea towel, not a napkin. Look at how cute. I love these embroidered tea towels. I cannot get enough of them. Also still have the French dressing left over from I think it was two dinners ago maybe three dinners ago we made French dressing for one of our salads I believe it was the cream cheese olive balls that we put the French dressing over so we're gonna use that for this salad if you didn't get a chance to watch that video and you want to see how this French dressing is made I'll go ahead and link it above so that after you watch this or right now if you want to transfer over to that one you can go ahead and see that I didn't realize my battery died while I was putting this salad together but just pretend that you saw me pull out all of this from the ice and then sprinkle some freshly grated Parmesan cheese and then drizzle the French dressing on there. Here, we'll do, we'll do the French dressing part again. We'll do a little more. How impressive, right? <laughs> For the peas this week, since they are creamed, I'm actually not going to follow this recipe. We have leftover cream sauce from last week, so instead I'm just going to empty this can of peas and I'm gonna leave just a little bit of a liquid, but I'm going to drain most of it off. And then once they seem to be heated through, I will add the leftover cream sauce and just incorporate it, let it thin out a little bit, and that's how we'll eat these peas. For the breadcrumbs, instead of crumbling the gluten-free bread that I have. We did that before and it worked out okay, but it didn't crumble that well. So I'm using these. They smell really good. They're seasoned very well. If the smell is any indication. Um, and instead of doing six cups because it wants you to kind of loosely pack this duck, our duck is not big enough for six cups. So I actually only have one cup here and I think that should be sufficient to loosely pack this duck. We have our duck here. I've dried it off a little bit so that it's not completely soaking wet. And you can see through the skin. I don't know if you can pick that up or not. It looks like this meat is much darker than a chicken. It also feels a lot fatter than a chicken and they've left this little hood of fat, probably where the neck and head were. So we'll have a little extra fat, I assume. I've drained the onions, put those in with the stuffing. And stuff this bird up. Now, I also didn't show, this duck did come with the organs with the neck, so I have that in my little carcass bag in the fridge. So when we go to make bone broth again, some of it will be, it'll be a whole poultry, poultry. It'll be a whole poultry broth. We'll have some chicken, we'll have some turkey, we'll have some duck. It'll be a broth medley. They wanted this loosely packed and if you can see in this little duck's butt up there. Ooh, I just flung a little stuffing. We're gonna have to do a thorough floor cleaning after this. Um, if you can see in there, it is almost to the top and it's 
loose-ish packed, I, we certainly would not have been able to fit six cups in there. That must have been a big old duck they were working with. This is not going well. The wing is stuck. I've forgotten. I thought I didn't need instructions on how to truss a chicken. I thought I had it memorized as many times as we've done it so far, but uh, it appears I have forgotten how to do it, and all of this stuffing is falling out of this bird's butt. Good enough for me. Oh my, do I need my hands washed. Are they chocolate croissants or Nutella croissants? They were like we got in Italy with the chocolate inside. Ah, uh, not chocolate hazelnut. No, probably not. Oh, did you get some for yourself? It looks more bulky than the ones in Italy. What's that? It looks more bulky than the ones in Italy. Oh, okay. And besides, you're probably just as well staying away from them. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm going to try to. I'm not following this uh, recommended diet while we're over there. Oh, probably like 20 pounds. It wasn't just that. It was the the half of a wheel of brie cheese and the gelato and... Oh, I see. Yeah, you yeah. lost 20 and I gained them. I, I know. I lost, you know. Yeah. Because... All right. What do you think about it? Okay. We got the bird flipped and in here is the hot water. Along with the vinegar and salt and pepper. Now there aren't a lot of drippings at the bottom here and so I may have to mix up just a little bit more of this hot water vinegar mixture. try everything and I'm glad because I am really hungry so that will make all of this meal taste even better we're starting off with our split pea soup and I did add that flour to it to thicken it and it is most certainly very thick now it smells just like your classic split pea soup um, I actually you know, thinking about it, I'm more accustomed to ham with split pea soup. I've had split peas on their own. Obviously, I just made uh, like pounds and pounds of them. But uh, for soup, most often I have it paired with ham, and I think that's pretty common. Let's try it without, though. This is pretty good. It tastes just like your classic ham and bean or split pea kind of soup. It has that very split pea flavor and it's a little bit gritty pretty thick this is a nice hearty way to start a meal and I assume you're probably only supposed to have just a little bit of it to start or I don't know if duck was expensive in the 1920s but maybe you were supposed to fill up on this a little bit before you got to the duck so you didn't eat quite so much duck and actually now that I'm thinking of it we're starting with a split pea soup we're also having creamed peas on the side of our duck. We have stuffing with the duck. We have sweet potatoes with the duck. That's a lot of pretty 
belly filling fiber rich foods. So maybe that is the angle they're going for with this one. Let's carve into that duck and you'll see how that turned out. Show you guys a little bit of this bird carved up. Uh, it from the outside, it looks very greasy. When I was handling it earlier, it felt very greasy. I used to think that I was a white meat person. I don't even know if there is white meat on a duck, I, but I used to prefer breast, but I think now I'm becoming a dark meat kind of person. I prefer the legs. And so you can see in there what it looks like, definitely darker than chicken. And let's find out what it tastes like. We have our plate here. I know I only have a little piece of this duck on right now. I'll get a little bit more if it turns out that I like it but I didn't wanna put a bunch on there on my plate if I didn't like it and end up wasting it and not being able to share more than what I could have. Now we have our sweet potato split at the side so you can see inside. And we have what I'm most looking forward to trying our apple horseradish sauce there. We're gonna give this duck a try on its own with the gravy first and then we'll try it with the apple horseradish sauce. I put a little skin on there to try it out as well. And a little bit of the stuffing. Eh. It smells okay. I think it smells a little bit different than turkey or chicken. but I can't quite put my finger on what's different about it. I think it's just kind of okay. And it has cooled down a good bit at this point of trying it. I let it rest and sit for a while because it said to serve it cold is better than warm. So it is on the colder side right now. And I just don't know that I like my poultry well, that's not true because I eat chicken cold often. So at least duck. I don't think I love duck cold. It's just kind of okay for me. Let's try the stuffing. I have a little bit of onion on there. That is really yummy. It smells very good. The seasoning on this particular type of breadcrumb is really great, I think, for my own preferences. Smells really good, tastes really good. I think that part is delicious. Not so much a fan of the duck yet. Let's try this apple horseradish sauce. The smells are competing right now. So my brain associates them with two very, very different things. So the apples is, associates with something that is sweet, more desserts or even a little bit sour. And the horseradish, it, I associate that with just much more spicy, usually with beef or with shrimp or something like that. And <laughs> I think my brain is trying to make a prediction on how this is going to turn out and it's, it's short-circuiting itself. It, it can't decide how this is going to taste. Ooh. That is not how I expected it to taste, but it pairs really, really well together. The smell to me doesn't go together, but maybe that's because I, I've already smelled them both in different situations. But eating them together, there's a balance in here and both of them have that kind of underlying tang. It's, oh, that's very nice together. Let's see if it helps this cold duck out any. I like those two together, but I think it's because it masks the flavor of the duck. I don't think it complements it or anything like that. I don't know that it goes well together. I think it just masks the flavor of the duck and bumps up something that's a little bit kind of, for me, was kind of plain and boring. This adds a nice dimension to it and makes it taste a lot better. So yeah, if you are somebody who likes kind of sweet, spicy, different kind of flavors, that is an excellent sauce to try out. Now we've had the cream peas several times before. 
I'm sure I'm going to like them. I'm guessing they're going to taste like canned peas with a cream sauce. And I'm betting that if you like canned peas, you're going to like this. And if you don't, you're going to hate it. <laughs> I feel like I've said that sentence several times already. I think that is really very tasty. It tastes a lot like canned peas with a cream sauce. And if you like canned peas, you're going to love it. And if you don't, you're going to hate it. <laughs> oh, sweet potatoes. I've been eating a lot of these recently. I know what they taste like, but let's go for it anyway. Hmm, Sweet potatoes are just so good. I wonder what they'll taste like with this apple horseradish sauce. Now that's an even weirder smell combination. They also go just fine together. Now for our salad. So I know we missed showing us put the salad together, but I'm sure you could imagine what it was like. It smells like Parmesan and a little bit of French dressing. I have a feeling I'm going to like this. I know iceberg lettuce gets such a bad rap. I'm a fan of it. I like iceberg lettuce. I like the crispness of it. I think it's very refreshing. I think it adds a nice kind of dimension to a salad or actually to a sandwich to a lot of things. I think it's pretty tasty. Now it might not be as nutrient dense as some other different lettuces, but I think if you're getting your leafy greens regularly, there's nothing wrong with adding iceberg lettuce if you enjoy it. That is a humongous bite. We're going to try a little smaller because uh, I would like to be polite to you guys. <laughs> it still didn't work. <laughs> I don't know if I mentioned this in the video that we made the French dressing in, but I do prefer my dressings to have a little bit of a different ratio of oil to vinegar. I think this is a little oil heavy for my preference, but if you like it like that, I think you'll really enjoy it. But for me, I think it needs a little more acidity to be as enjoyable as I want it to be, but it's not bad. Overall, it's pretty good. I like the salad for the middle because everything we've had so far is a good bit heavier. Starting out with that heavy soup and then moving on to our starchy vegetables that have, and there's gravy in there, there is uh, cream sauce on the peas, there is some brightness with that apple and horseradish dressing, but the overall it was, it was really pretty heavy and so to add a bit of lightness and brightness with this salad, I think really does a nice job balancing that well. All right, this is definitely not as pretty as I was hoping it would turn out to be, but hopefully it is delicious. I'm going straight for this middle one here. It doesn't look exactly done, but maybe that's just the way it looks. I can't tell if the biscuit is the whole way to the top because this is definitely pretty sure biscuit up here at the top, it had popped through, but there's biscuit on the bottom. So I don't know if there's just some biscuit on the bottom, some biscuit on the top and custard in the middle. I'm not sure. Let's try it and find out. Here it is on the plate. It smells good. It smells like I can smell the peaches. I also smell the biscuits. You know, the texture is interesting. It seems kind of bouncy. And at first I thought, well, it looks like maybe it's not done, but I think maybe that's just the texture now with the custard layer in there mixed in with the biscuit maybe. Maybe it altered the biscuit's texture. Let's try it. I genuinely can't tell the bottom feels like it's biscuity or dough. It feels like dough that has been cooked, but it's just a little bit 
on the um, quichier side, like it's a, a custardy dough. The top of it felt very soft and definitely not like dough at all. Just very easy to kind of swish your tongue right through. Very smooth, very, there wasn't a lot of give in there at all. Puree, that's the word. That's the word I was looking for. It felt like very soft, bouncy, squishy dough at the bottom and then a puree on the top. And I really genuinely can't tell if that top is the custardy kind of um, milk, sugar, egg layer or if it's the... And... And I guess where I tried also, the peach was sitting on top of it. So is that some of the peach juice too that softened it and added to that? Or is it dough that just isn't done? I, I really can't tell, but I can tell you that unquestionably 20 minutes wasn't enough. Let's try it with the peach. The flavor is very good. And after baking it so long, this peach almost is more reminiscent of an apricot. The texture and almost like a, a dried apricot that maybe got rehydrated a little bit more than a peach. The flavor is good. There's just something a little bit off with the texture. Maybe it's the dough. Maybe it's that I use that gluten-free biscuit dough and this would be different. But part of me wonders if just the amount of custard layer was too much because regardless of what kind of dough we would have used, it wanted us to use a square pan. And I assume that the original one that I picked would have been an okay size or a pretty standard size for what they were asking for back in the day. That was way too much of that liquid to fit in there. I mean, even if we wouldn't have added anything else, just that liquid, it barely would have fit. The amount of dough that we used was pretty comparable to what was in the original recipe. So I don't think that the amount of dough was it. I just, I think maybe there was something a little bit off about this recipe and maybe not. Maybe I did something wrong. If you have some insight, go ahead and chime in here. Um, but yeah, if I was doing this again, I might maybe half the amount of liquid that I put in here. Overall, I think this was an excellent meal. Although I personally didn't like the duck, if you're somebody who does like duck, this meal really went very well together. You started out with a very hearty starter, and again, as we discussed before, uh, some heartier vegetables and sides to go with the meat that was a little bit of a heavier meat. Then you had a nice kind of bright sauce to go with that, and then the salad that really lightened things up, and then kind of a, I won't say a heavy dessert, kind of more maybe a neutral dessert, a fruity dessert that also had some of that biscuit bottom and top. I guess it, it kind of sandwiched after a while. Overall, I think this menu went very well together. Nutrition-wise, it wasn't bad either. We saw a lot more fiber in this meal than we have in some of our past meals. There's a good balance of vegetables, cooked, uncooked, and fruits. We had apples in the apple horseradish sauce. We had the peaches in our dessert. We had several different vegetables, and we had a few different colors of vegetables as well, which I thought was very, very nice. Cost-wise, for six people, I'm estimating this meal somewhere between $65 and $80. So while not the cheapest meal that we've seen so far, not the most expensive either. If you liked tonight's dinner, please consider giving this video a like and subscribing to the channel so that you never miss another dinner with us. Join us next week where our dessert is going to be a prune whip with a custard sauce. See you then.